welcome to the GSE Grace podcast. Today we are getting to grips with the SFI expanded offer with director Robert Sullivan. Rob, thank you so much for joining us You're again welcome. today. Um, the dust has settled on the latest DEFRA announcement. There's a lot to digest and get to grips with. What are your initial thoughts? Uh, you're certainly right on that last point in terms of the amount to digest. Uh, just to give you a flavour, the 2023 offer, the handbook was 170 odd pages. The 2024 offer, the handbook is 366 oh pages. Oh my gosh. So that alone means there's an awful lot of more effort needed to actually understand the full ins and outs of everything that we're looking at now. That said, there's, there's, there's pros and cons. Um, the actual, from a negative point of view, it's certainly less flexible. Okay. They've tied it up on a number of the uh, management prescriptions. They've closed some of the, shall we call them, loopholes, um, which farmers were using to the to their benefit. Yet yeah, the complexity has certainly increased. On the positive side of things, there is now a clear or clearer understanding of how we can move uh, stewardship agreements into SFI, or certain types of stewardship agreements can be moved across into SFI, which will help. Uh, a number of farmers uh, where they're keen to do that but have not had the flexibility before that. Okay, so there's clearly going to be winners and losers. Very definitely winners and losers, yeah. Okay, and so you mentioned more stringent management prescriptions um, and less flex for farmers. So could you perhaps give me some examples of kind of what we've noticed so far within within the paper? Yeah, certainly. Probably the two most obvious ones. Um, uh, one is uh, what they call SAM3, which is the herbal lays. Previously, there was no um, prescription or prescriptive requirement about how much fertilizer could be used. You don't have to use any, but you were there was nothing stating that you couldn't use as much as you wanted, as long as you still met the uh, the aims of the actual particular option. Whereas now they're now saying that there's a maximum going to be a maximum application rate of forty kilos of nitrogen, uh, which might put some people off. Right. Uh, another option is the legume fallow. Uh, NUM3 changed its code now as well on the new ones, which is something to bear in mind. Uh, but the legume fallow under the previous option uh, was a rotational option, so you could literally move it annually, which for a number of farmers were looking to use that as part of their, within their rotation, so they were moving it around the rotation, possibly um, it, it, with uh, to actually take the place of break crops, oil seed rape, or certain things like that. Now... What they're saying under the new option is the fact that if you haven't actually sown it, where you do sow it going forward under this scheme, after you've actually met the, gone into the, the uh, agreement, it has to stay there for the full three, three years of the agreement. So that ability to rotate it round um, the rest of the farm uh, has gone. Okay. And so does, do these changes, will they affect people who are in a 2023 agreement or is it just going to affect now, our members? understanding is the rules for the 2023 option the agreements are what they were then it's for anyone that is now going to be applying under the 2024 um, scheme uh, application process they will have to follow those rules right and um, so what's the motivation behind changing it because of, i think the 2023 scheme was working well farmers were signing up so why have they so using those kind of two examples why have Jeffrey do you I mean you can't possibly sort of you know tell us what they're thinking but what you know why would they have uh, made those changes I do find it strange um, basically because what they were saying is they were actually trying to provide a scheme where actually was able farmers were able to work with them mm. um, so the reality is um, if you're going back to the legume fellow where they're now saying it has to be in the same place for the full three years of the scheme even under the old countryside stewardship scheme, it was only going to be in place for two years, and it wasn't. It was picked up, but it wasn't used massively. I think the reality is, for most people, if they're expecting to put something into the ground for three years, for the full three years, there's probably not going to be an awful lot of interest in mm. in that. Or certainly, from my point of view, with my agronomic hat on, I do question the the value for that within a wider rotation. Right. Okay. Um, and then. You mentioned sort of tightening the loopholes. Um, other, could you give any examples of sort of where 
pharmacists, let's call them, seen an opportunity to sort of, you know, maximize the benefits they could get from signing up to SFI. What's changed then, or what 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 was there that they'll no longer be able to do? Well, one of, one of the, one of the options um, was uh, the ability where you could actually claim to for a multi-species winter cover crop which basically meant you could put, if you sowed beans alongside your winter cereal crop, that would be sufficient to meet the uh, obligations for that option, enable you to receive the payment of £129 a hectare. Now, it's slightly unclear from the uh, handbook, and we are actually waiting guidance back from the RPA as to what they truly mean, but what they are now stating, it implies that you won't be able to do that going forward. Right. So that option to, to enable you to obtain a payment might well be now not there. Right. Okay. Gosh, so uh, definitely a lot less kind of flex and opportunity among some of these options. Very much so. Okay. So I think we've talked quite a lot about sort of maybe the n- more negative um, implications of the new offer. What are the positives then? You mentioned uh, steward, mid-tier stewardship being incorporated into SFI. I don't know if you could tell me a bit more. Yeah, it's, it's not just mid-tier stewardship. It's not, it's not just mid-tier. It is also the old higher-level stewardship as well, okay. where they are saying that we will be able to move from um, uh, those schemes into uh, into the SFI oh, so that's good without, without actual penalty, where it doesn't appear to be the case at this moment in time, and again, we're seeking guidance from the RPA, is the higher higher level countryside stewardship schemes appear to have to remain where they are at this moment in time. They don't have the flexibility to move into SFI. The actual full details of how people do that mm. is still being um, is still unclear. Okay. But certainly the, uh, the indication is that later in the year, people will be able to do that, which for a number of people, certainly in the higher level, um, old higher level environmental stewardship schemes uh, it's probably going to be beneficial for them to do that. Okay because we've had quite a bit of feedback from, haven't we from clients who are quite keen to to move and they feel that they've entered into these um, higher level schemes are losing out for want of a better which, word. Which they are mm. which they are uh, and at the moment there's nothing they can do about it the positive thing is there is now a bit of light at the end of the tunnel yeah. What we would be saying to them is actually as soon as that they, there is clear an understanding of what we need to do, let's get on, get on board and let's start actually developing a new scheme, uh, steward, uh, SFI application, so that when we can do the switch, we can do the switch, switch as soon as possible. So any more positives, Rob? Uh, yeah, there's, there are a number of ones. Um, there was this strange situation where people who hadn't been claiming BPS weren't allowed to go into... SFI, right. Uh, that is now no longer the case. New entrants are uh, who haven't claimed previously claimed BPS will now be able to go into the uh, SFI scheme directly, um, and there are quite a few more options now on the table for the uh, grassland areas and upland grassland areas. Um, again, we're working through the details of those to actually see how they might fit together, but. Whereas historically, certainly 2023 was very much more arable focused mm. with hardly any grassland options at all. At least we've got more grassland options to look at on the table. How they might fit into an individual's business, we're still working our way through. Okay. But at least we've got more options to think about. Good. And what about stacking, Rob? Is it, is it possible for people to combine these options? You know, we're looking at people who are in a 2023 agreement, you know, they've been waiting for this announcement to look at more options they can potentially integrate with what they've already got is that going to be quite straightforward for them to do well the first bit is yes they will be able to do that the second bit is actually now because there is so many different options there it's not actually that straightforward to work out which options you can stack with which other options okay Uh, certainly if you look at the booklet and you see the tables for each, each 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 option as to what option they can then work with it's a good old long list. Right. Uh, so whilst we will get our heads around it in due course, uh, the reality is that at this moment in time, it looks quite intimidating how to understand which go with which. Okay. But the basic premise is that we will be able to do that. Okay, well, that's brilliant. Thank you very much for that, Rob. That's been a really good kind of broad overview of our initial kind of reaction uh, to the SFI expanded offer. And over the next 
few podcasts, what we'll be doing is we'll be looking into it in a lot more detail and kind of breaking it down sector by sector, um, just to give people more of an idea of uh, what the options are that are available to them. So I look forward to seeing you then. Thank you very much for listening.